Hi everyone. It's M and M. One shot and one opportunity. And today we're going to talk about your dream clients and how to attract them. All right. So we can get really get into the song. But I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and business and personal success strategist at TotalGenius.net where I help you discover your genius, which is a combination of your expertise and life experience, and build it into a profit-generating business, which is based on your purpose. So today, uh, you know, I already did a three-part video series on getting clients, but I want to talk about attracting your dream clients. And so I've really defined what a dream client is, at least to me. So if that doesn't define who your dream client is, this may not be the right broadcast for you. But, you know, I believe a dream client is someone that values you. They, they want to learn from you. They value your intelligence. They value what it is that, that you do, the person that you are. And, uh, and they, they want to, um, they want to, they want to learn from you. And in addition, they want to pay you. So, you know, they don't have to pay you right away in order to be, you know, part of your BBF, your best business friend audience. But, uh, you know, a dream client before they become a client is someone who values what you do so much so that when or if the time comes up when they need you, then they want to pay you. So uh, they, they realize that you are the answer. So that's another quality of a dream client. Another quality is uh, you love them. You love the person that they are. You would probably be friends if you weren't working with them. And, uh, you know, I, I, that's why I call them best business friends. Because you actually, you know, you could have conversations about, you know, what you're having for dinner and you, and you love them. And they tell people about you. So your, um, your dream clients are people that broadcast your message for you. They think that, you know, you're really smart. So they share your posts. They, they tell people, wow, she's got a great program or he's got a great program. So that's to me is a dream client. And that's what we're going to talk about attracting today. And if you want more in-depth uh, information about attracting clients, you can go to uh, totalgenius.net backslash get dash clients, which is uh, a, an article that has uh, about eight steps that you can do to get clients. And in addition, uh, there's a three-part video series. Uh, so, you know, in fact, almost uh, uh, the majority of my YouTube channel uh, is filled with client attraction information, copywriting, and all of that. But I digress. So we're going to talk about attracting uh, your dream clients today. So, you know, there is a overwhelming need out there. And, uh, the, you know, I'm sure that you've seen the gurus and then the people who have very loud voices who may have built their business to have a, a lot of clients, an overflow of clients uh, and money, uh, quite quickly. And so uh, what ends up happening is that uh, people start following. So there's a, um, there's a book called Influence. It was written, written by Robert Cialdini. It's a classic. And it talks about the six uh, traits of influence. And one of them is social proof. So while this person may have made a lot of money, uh, when people start following somebody, uh, and it catches on, it crosses something that Malcolm Gladwell wrote about, which is called the tipping point. And then suddenly people just start following them, uh, and they don't even know why, just because, you know, people gather with crowds. So, you know, I think the overwhelming problem of why people are not attracting your dream clients is that you're chasing somebody else's success, and... In addition, uh, you know, trying to learn, which, you know, being an entrepreneur is, is, is somewhat difficult until you catch, you know, catch, it, catch how you are supposed to best operate. So the, uh, the mistake is, is going to learn many people's different teachings and then uh, overwhelming yourself. And then suddenly you lose the, the perspective 
of what your dream clients are, you know, the people that value you and want to pay you. And then it just becomes a numbers game or a survival game. So this is why I'm doing this broadcast is because I really want to fix this. And I always believe that you have to get down to the roots in order to fix the problems. So at the root of your dream client attraction system is you. You know, uh, you define you, but what often happens, and you may have not even done this before, uh, before you launched your business, but you actually need to define you. You need to put you into words not just in a, you know, oh, that's my about page. You actually have to really get specific. What is the problem you solve? What is the experience you have? Who do you speak to? Uh, What words do you naturally use? You know, what issues have you overcome? What has your life led you to do? You know, I ask these questions, who are you and why are you here a lot? to people because if you don't know that, then you're going to have a very hard time attracting your dream clients. Your clients are you before you discovered your solution. So, you know, some people say, you know, you three years earlier. Well, it could be three years. It could be 10 years. um, It could be today. But if you don't know who you are spelled out like on paper, then who you think you are is a very different version. So, you know, this is what I actually help people do is combine your expertise and life experience. I call that your genius, which is really your purpose. You know, our our, um, personalities are formed between the ages of zero to seven. So all the layers on top of who you actually think you are, so if you haven't actually defined yourself, who you think you are is just made up of, you know, how people treated you, uh, what your friends uh, told you that you were, and uh, your insecurities as you were growing up. You know, do you think you're shy? Do you think that, um, you know, you make mistakes a lot? Do you think all those things uh, are just layers on top of the personality and the person that you were between the ages of zero to seven? So I help people come back to that and then build it back up into their expertise and life experience. So you need to break that down and really understand who you are so that you can define and and look for your ideal clients. So I recommend, you know, you you create your success identity. Your success identity is your highest self. So when you envision yourself at your highest self, which is who the person you should be to show up to be every day in your business, who you envision yourself to be as your highest self, and break it down to three to five words. And so whatever words you think you are, you should up-level them. Because you want to show up better than you think you are. You actually, because, you know, we all uh, suffer from, um, you know, oh, uh, you know, we were raised not to stand out. We were raised to be polite, to not brag. Well, I tell my clients and my audience, my, my business friends, to brag. Brag boldly because you're doing it for the sake of others. This is not like, I'm so great, you know, you, am, you know, <laughs> whatever you say. This is about, you know, speaking with confidence. People are, nothing sells like conviction and confidence. So you want to speak with confidence. You are the leader and you are CEO of your company. So those three to five words, if, if they aren't making you like hold your chest up and, and want to, you know, Tarzan, wah, then you need to up level. So those three to five words are at the basis of who you are and who you show up to be every day as a CEO. Then, you know, This is about what do you do? Like, what do you really do in your business? What is your genius? What is your expertise? What has your life led you to do that you will get up every day and bang your head against the wall in order to get that message out? 
What will you be so bold because it's you, like down to the core, and you know it, true to your soul, that you will stand up on your soapbox even when you think nobody is listening because you could go and talk hours about it. What will you feel embarrassed about because you don't like doing live video or you know you, you don't you don't want to cause commotion what do you feel so strongly about once you get talking about it there's no shutting you up what are you willing to show up for every day you know Steve Jobs nobody believed that a design a good design people would pay for that nobody so you know when Apple first launched it wasn't successful. It, he didn't launch as Steve Jobs, you know, the icon who died a legend. People were like laughing at him. And you know when he launched the iPhone, people were like, the Blackberry is so <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm going to pull out this, this clunky keyboard because I would rather do that than that weird iPhone. What are you willing to stand behind? That's called commitment, and I think this is missing from most people online, which is why, you know, people feel lack of visibility. You feel lack of visibility, uh, which is why then you feel like you're not, you're not attracting clients, and I think part of it is, is that you haven't decided that you're committed and that you're going to show up as that commitment every day. I can't tell you enough that your successful business is not paid by likes. No, you know, you can't take likes to a bank. You can't get enough people around you that are going to pay your rent if they, if they have no reason to buy from you or believe in you. And so if you feel lack of visibility, then number one, you haven't defined you. Number two, you haven't defined your ideal client. Number three, you haven't defined your message. Those three things and your commitment mean that you show up with that every single day. Not because you think you're so great, because you know you are helping others. You know, in order to have a successful business, people need to exchange money for the value that you show up to be. So if you're showing up to be liked, that's not value. If you're showing up to, um, to be distracted, that's not value. If you're showing up to make money, that's not value either. You actually have to have something that, pe that, that you believe in and that people believe in. And then they get behind your mission. You know, gaining momentum with anybody is not an easy task. You know, if you're just making a couple thousand and you want to grow to, you know, 10,000, 20,000, it's not an overnight thing. You know, you, you don't um, decide you're going to go on a diet and lose 10 pounds and stop eating cake one night and then, you know, wake up to check your stomach to see if you lost 10 pounds. That's just not the way that it works. So this is about your solid commitment. Then, you know, just what, what I said, you need to define your BBF ideal client. So you need to actually, uh, you know, this isn't a customer avatar. So if you missed my video, uh, it, it was Conscious Client Attraction. You can see it on my YouTube channel. It's under Shauna Yao. And I did a whole video on uh, the exact steps you need to, uh, to, to attract your ideal clients without feeling like you're selling them. So... You know, this is about um, understanding their feelings. What do they go to bed worrying about? What can they, what do they lose sleep about? What are they Googling? You know, all those things are the thing behind the thing that when you speak it, that's something they believe in. That's something that nobody else says like you, and that's something they would pay for. That's a dream client that you just speak and you don't have to adjust your message. They're like, I get it. Now, what I just said, 
You don't have to adjust your message. If you are adjusting your message so that you think people will like you, you're not going to get your dream clients. You're going to get, I don't know, random people. Because in order, in order to get your dream clients, you're going to have to um, detract your, uh, the clients that, that you're not meant to serve. You're going to have to be willing to send people away. I can't serve you. Because when you do that, it opens you up for more opportunity. You know, have you heard of like decluttering and how it like opens up opportunity? Same sort of thing. If you have a bunch of random people in, in your business life, in your life in general, you are closing the door to the people that you serve. We only have a limited amount of attention and, uh, and, and if you're, then you have to like vanilla your, your message and no one's going to hear you. So this is really about, we're getting down to specifics. So let's get a little more specific. We're going to talk about your website. So everybody's talking about, you know, your email sales funnel. You have to have an email sales funnel, blah, blah, blah. And you know, y- you, you don't have to cause I made five figures without a, an email sales funnel, but that it, it's a very beneficial thing, but that's not the funnel I'm talking about. I'm talking about a feelings funnel. So don't go Googling that. I made that up because feelings, emotion, the middle brain, that's where real decisions are made. The heartfelt gut decisions. So if you feel, feel if you feel sleazy selling, you're not doing it right. Because we're going for emotion. Like we want our, we're talking about dream clients, people that get us. And so you get them too. It's not a one way street. So this is, so now we're going to take it to your website. So this is part of your feelings funnel. And now we're going to bring it to, um, to all the pieces that make up your business. So, you know, your home base in your business is not Facebook. (laughs) <laughs> shock your home base is your website the goal is to get people back to your website you want people to find out about you when people take steps closer to you that's a part of a funnel if you want to really break it down into terms that's a, that's a funnel they are literally taking steps closer to you because they want to find out more about you whether you sell a product or service if you interact at all with your ideal clients and even if you don't if you, if you have a more of a personalized product or service, then your about page really needs to speak uh, not only about you, but it has to um, attract the people that get you. So people, you know, stories are how humans communicate, period. Regard, if you have a business or you don't. That's how humans communicate. So when that happens... You, um, when, when you, when you tell a story, it's very interesting, is that when you tell a story, other people hear it from their perspective. So they literally are like trying to find associations in their own lives based on your story. I'm going to just allow a minute for that to absorb. Is that, you know, the human mind takes in a story and builds your model of reality based on uh, on stories based on like concepts that you can attach to your own life if if you know when i say when people get you that means that they are like you know they, they understand because they've been through something similar if they don't get you it's just like noise you probably have thousands of friends on facebook And you probably recognize about, you know, 20 people. Sorry. Shh. Sorry. Package. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through, you know, my, my, um, Harlow, I'm going to walk you through my about page. If you want to go to it, it's at uh, totalgenius.net backslash about dash Shauna. Harlow! Sorry. Okay, so see so okay so let me see if I can get a good 
So I'm just, I'm just going to re- read you some key points. So I said, I've never been one to follow the crowds and my business uh, was certainly not going to uh, be an exception. So I'm already saying the type of person I am. You know, if somebody is looking um, for somebody who's not a rebel, then you're probably not my media. So, you know, I say I'm a business owner, a dog lover, an introvert. So I'm, I'm telling them who I, I am, meaning that if, that if they are that, they get me. I'm about holistic health. So, you know, this is, uh, I'm a bit of a rebel. I highlighted that because I'm very an independent thinker. So this is like, I'm getting really specific. So if you want to, you know, if you're a follower, you probably won't like me. Um, you know, I, I talk about my past. And then I talk about helping people because that's really important to me. That's actually why I have a business. Uh, and then I talk about my problems. You know, when I first started my business, no one could see me and no one could hear me. And then I say I got determined and mad. So, you know, I got mad. So I have emotion and I was going to find a, a, um, a uh, solution. So I invested so, you know, I'm reminding people, you need to invest. And then I talk about, you know, my own way, the Facebook black hole, you know, not being cookie cutter. And I said, genius doesn't belong in a box and you can't do things the way everybody else is doing it. You believe in having a purpose, want to love what you do, help people be inspired, and most of all, have a life. You want to love what you do online and offline. So I go on and on, you know, and I talk about my legacy clients and beating myself up. You can go to it and read it. So I wanted to show you because, you know, I'm, I was very specific. So if you go to my about page and uh, you're looking for, let's say, like a coach or something, and that's not you, you instantly will be turned away. I don't want to work with someone who's a rebel. Ooh, you know, that's scary. Um, you know, I, I want to think like everybody else, <laughs> whatever somebody's thinking. And they would go away. But people that, that are more independent are like, huh, I kind of get that. And they may want to read some of my articles. So this is not like an instant, I have a client now, you know. No, this is a feelings funnel. We want to get to people's emotion. I don't know if I'm dark or something or like, I don't know, but I'm just going to keep going. So, okay. So we, we, we understand this feelings funnel, regardless if you have an email funnel, this is all about feelings. And even if you have an email funnel, uh, that's about your feelings too. So, uh, now, you know what that is, what I just did in my about page, you should go read it is that, um, I am teaching people how to value me. I am teaching people the value that I, I believe you may not, but I believe those are my highest values. Being an independent thinker, finding solutions, you know, understanding people's problems because I've been through them too. That's my highest value. What are yours? And how do you work that into your about page? Your about page is like a glorified sales page. And you know why? Because it's the second most visited page on your website. We want people to love you. A dream client is someone who loves you, not just someone who, not just someone who needs your help. So there are lots of people that I could help. But there are not lots, you know, I'm sorry, there are lots of people I can help. But there are certain people that I get and I really want to help. And who get me, who are intelligent, so who do the work. So this is something that's very common in the coaching world is that you get a client and they don't do the work and then they don't get results. Maybe they blame you or maybe they just sit in like passive um, depression, which is horrible. You don't want to be responsible for that. I've, I've had those clients and it's, it's just, it's kind of a horrific thing. I had them in the very beginning of my business. And now I see, you know, I've had people book multiple consultations with me uh, telling me, oh yeah, now's the time just so that they can learn from me in a consultation. And I learned you want to speak to people that value you, who you value, 
and who you can help. Those three things combined make a dream client. Uh, let's see. So, um, social media. I'm going to use Facebook as an example, but this goes for all social media. You know what I was talking about? The second point, commitment and showing up. If your business is positioned correctly, you, have a, you take a strong stand against something or for something. This means you don't show up for likes. You show up and deliver your highest value. Not the highest value of the most popular coach who's doing the exact same thing you're doing. And then, you know, you go, oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that because clearly that's working for them. You show up every day and you are willing to be Steve Jobs. You're willing to be J.K. Rowling. You're willing to be all those people who created change because they were willing to believe in themselves. I say this almost every day. Believing, yourself, believing in yourself is not a sales tactic. It's the goal of everyone's life, whether you have a business or not. And it's the goal of your purposeful business. You're a change maker. You know, you, in order to attract attention and from your dream clients, you're going to have to lead your own revolution. You don't have to change the world. You don't have to build the iPhone. But you have to be determined to lead your own revolution so that every day you want to fight for the people that, that you serve. That's a mission that's a worthy mission meaningful, that is worth getting up for, it's worth feeling stupid for, it's worth um, getting over yourself for, it's worth picking yourself up when you're having a bad day and, and saying, you know what, I'm charging for it. I charge for it every day. I have bad days every day because of my health condition. <laughs> and I get up and stand in front of you because I have a mission. What's your mission? Then you need to go and write it in your about page. Write it in your copy. Speak it online. And then, uh, let's see. So the system of, on social media is like you speak, you teach, and then, this is so critical, you offer. It's like this loop. You have to... Um, keep reminding people you have a business. So, you know, I, I call this co covert behavior. People think, I'm just going to not feel sleazy and hang out in Facebook groups and try to prove my value and someone will see it and then they'll hire me. You know what happens? I wish I could make a cricket noise. Nothing. <laughs> because everybody's hanging out on Facebook. It's a time waster and you're not giving value. Number one. Number two, you're blending in with everyone else. And number three, you're not giving people something to believe in. You lose your self-esteem. You don't show up the next day. And so, uh, you know, covert behavior is doing that. Being a CEO of a company is about saying, you know what? I'm teaching you because I have a business. Am I trying to sell you now? You know what? Maybe I have a business. I'm showing you, uh, teaching you solutions to your problem. And if you need help, I have solutions. For the right people, I have solutions. You know, you need to make it clear that you have a business. You're a business owner. It's not sleazy. When was the last time you went to Whole Foods and thought they were sleazy? Uh... You're a business owner, so you make money by having people pay you, <laughs> period. And so uh, I just told somebody this today. I tell people this a lot every time I see it, that you should never use the word LOL after you talk about your business, state your business, talk about the price, uh, talk about raising your prices, talk about anything in your life. LOL is for something that's seriously funny. LOL is not, you know, I have a, pr a program and it's <laughs> it's $1,000. LOL. 
speak with conviction, I have a program, it's $1,000. This is how it can help you. There is no LOL. You're not a joke. Neither is your business. Okay, so, uh, you know, go to that video, uh, Conscious Client Attraction, on my YouTube channel. Uh, and then you can also um, look at the resource, which is the eight steps to getting clients and the three video series at totalgenius.net backslash get dash clients. I'm going to teach you a couple last things. When you are on video, be direct to camera. Like your eyes, you're looking at yourself. Look at yourself so that you're looking into the eyes of the people that you're speaking to. This is about, um, you know, we, they've done studies, research shows that when you are face direct with the camera and people can see your eyes, they associate you with whatever you're talking about. Meaning, you're teaching solutions, so they associate you with the solutions. So you look at, at yourself, at the camera. Um, let's see. Your business should, you know, get people to move to change. You don't have to see that change, but you should be teaching things that are, um, that are, are uh, um, influential enough and meaningful enough that it creates change in someone's life. You may not see that change, but that's okay. You know, this is about understanding that when you have a mission and your purpose is on, on track, that you will, you will see it when you believe it. I didn't say you will uh, believe it. Let's see. I didn't say you will uh, believe it and then see it. No, wait. What am I trying to say? First, you have to believe it, and then you will see it. You won't see it and then believe it. You have to believe it, and then you will see it. You have to believe it when nobody is listening. You have to believe it when, you know, you're like, where are my clients? That's called believing in yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, that, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to teach you today. It's a little, you know, a lot. So if you want to get into further discussion about getting clients, join my group on Facebook. It's called The Genius Collective. It's high-level, uh, intelligent, purpose-driven people in there. And some of them love dogs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, go to my resources, the totalgenius.net backslash get, get dash clients. Look at my about page. You know how that's written? You can model my about page and write in your own words. And, uh, you know, um, watch that video. So the video I did on conscious client attraction on my YouTube channel is actually really good. And so if you're loving this right now, you should really go and see that. Because if there is any bit of, I feel sleazy or whatever, um, first of all, you have a business, so don't feel sleazy. Second of all, uh, you know, you're not doing it right if you feel sleazy. And so, you know, there's nothing worse than um, focusing on just numbers and following people who have numbers because just because they made money doesn't mean that you will. If they're not teaching you about you, not like, you know, just the habit. If they're not teaching you how to understand you, there is a problem all you need in order to make money is you, your genius, and a way to get it out. You don't need an email funnel. You don't, need, uh, you don't even need email. You don't need any of that. If you have a voice and you have something worthy of paying money for and you have, uh, you have something to sell and you have somebody else. Oh, so this is a great example. Uh, and I'm going to end with this. Is that... If you are, let's say you have this, um, this pain in your leg, severe, I have a pain in my leg actually, and it's, it's severe, and, uh, and the more you walk, the worse it gets. You've had it for years. You, you go to sleep and you're like practically crying. One day, and, and you, you like look for solutions, you paid for solutions, you can't find solutions. One day, you're standing in line at the grocery store and this homeless guy is like behind you and you're like, oh my God, this guy smells. And he's like, and, and you start telling the cashier about like, 
the pain in your leg, and the guy behind you, the homeless guy, is like, oh my God, does it like this? And it's shooting up your leg, and oh my God, when you sleep, it's like this shooting pain. You're like, oh my God, that's exactly my pain. He said, I solved mine. I, I was crippled before. I was in a wheelchair, and I solved it with this brace. I can sell it to you for $10. Do you think you're going to whip out your wallet and buy that brace? Did he have a website, an email sales funnel? Did he, like, uh, have anything besides the solution? Stop learning things that aren't uh, important to you, that you can Google. And start learning about your foundation and speaking your mind and being the genius that you already are. Believing in yourself is not a sales tactic. Bragging boldly about your purposeful mission to help others is not a sales tactic either. It's a purpose. And that's what, that's what um, you know, living a meaningful life means. It's how great change happens. It's how Steve Jobs became an icon. You have to do it. It's why Malcolm Gladwell uh, wrote the wrote the book The Tipping Point. You know he uses a, a um, an example of Birkenstocks. Are Birkenstocks the ugliest shoe you've ever seen? You're nodding your head. Oh my God, they're so ugly. I'm sorry if you have one, but they're really ugly. Do you think that when they launched, that people were like, "That's the best shoe ever"? I mean, seriously. History has proven that if you believe in something so much and you find one person who believes in it and you keep going at it, eventually two people and sometimes even five. And then eventually you maybe you get the sixth person and they'll tell somebody and then that person will tell somebody. That's called uh, momentum and then you reach the tipping point. Suddenly it blows up. Do you know what it looks like before then? I wish I could make that cricket noise. Because before that, it's like nothing. You're literally like talking to the wall. But you believe in yourself so much, you believe it and then you see it. I guarantee you, look at history. There are 7 billion people in the world, and only one of them is you. 95% of people were born with perfect genetics. And look, you have a business. You have two arms and two legs. You have a brain. Believing in yourself is not a sales tactic. So believe in yourself. Come join me at the Genius Collective. Please share this with somebody who you think you know, really wants to and deserves to work with dream clients. And uh, uh, if you want, you know, I, I gave you all the resources before. You can go re-listen to this. Look at the post below. I put links in there. And uh, I'll see you guys later, okay? I probably won't be here tomorrow because I have a client. Carolyn, I saw you. And uh, I will talk to you later, okay? Bye.